Just as you have native types in the .NET framework, strings and integers, you can also make your own custom types to represent real-world objects like books and reports. And in any real-world problem that you're trying to solve, you quickly get to the point where classes, making your own custom classes, are going to make things much easier. That's what I want to demonstrate to you in this lesson. Let's say that you need to record a number of reports that each have a title, description, and number of pages. Here's a very simplistic way of going about it the wrong way. You would say report title equals uh, January report, for instance, and you have a string report description, which is this is the first report, and then you have a int, for instance, report number of pages, you know, which is that many. Now what are you going to do when you have the February report? You're going to copy this and you're going to have to somehow change these variables so that they are different from the first variables, like this. You can already see where this is going and the problem that you're going to have very quickly. You have too many variables. Now, another way you could try to solve this is, for instance, make a report title string array and report description a string array and report number of pages a string array and so january report would have an id of or an index of zero and the report title zero would be january report and the report title index two would be the february report etc this is actually how i remember programming back in the 80s with languages like dbase and clipper which didn't support classes but today thank goodness languages have evolved and C Sharp supports something called generic collections, which allows you to save a collection of, for instance, reports. So you make a class called report and save it in a collection of reports, and things are much easier. So let me show you how to do that. First, let's go outside of our class and create another class. The class, we'll call it public class report, because that's what we want to the kind of objects we want to have are reports. And these reports have a title, which is string, description, which is a string, and number of pages, which is an integer. So let's make these like this. Type P-R-O-P, tab, tab. Type string, tab, tab, title. Go to the end of the line, enter, and type the next one. P-R-O-P, tab, tab, string, tab, tab, description. Go to the end of the line and repeat. And what we're doing is making properties of the report. Number of pages, like this. So now instead of creating a string or an integer, we can create a report. Let's do that. So we say report, report equals new report. Now we have a report variable or object, and we can say report dot, and here we see our properties. Title equals January report, and report description equals, this is the first report, and report number of pages equals some number of pages. If you ever need to re align the lines, you can do Control K D, and it'll bring everything back into order. Control K, Control D. So let's comment this out. I'm typing Control K, Control C. So now that we have this class, report, which creates these objects, report, how are we going to handle the issue with the February report when we have a second one? Well, we could say report, report two equals new report, and report two, title report two, description report two, number of pages, etc. But we kind of run into the same problem with that. So let me show you a real world example of how a class or a custom class like report will help you solve a real task. So in the real world, data comes in from a database or somewhere. In this example, we're going to bring it in from a string just for example's sake. So let's say we have a string that we got from some kind of text file, January report, the first report, and it has 123 pages, and we have February report, 
the second report and it has so many pages or March report the third report and it has so many pages so let's say that that's our data source now watch this magic we're going to make a collection of reports called reports like that this is a generic list which holds the type report in a variable called reports so now for this example i need to get an array with items that are between each of these semicolons so i'm going to make a string array just call it parts of the import string and split it on semicolons. And now I'm going to run through the array of parts and build my report objects. So I'm going to say here i equals zero to parts length. So the number of parts that are in there, which will be, I have three months and each have three parts, so that'll be nine. And then I'm going to say inside this loop report, report let me delete this example or uncomment it. control k control c to comment it out report report equals new report then report title equals parts i so the first time it'll be zero which will be january report and then report description equals parts i plus one and report number of pages equals parts i plus two but since this is an integer it's not going to let me do this so i have to convert it which is very easy in c sharp always use the convert and then to whatever you want to convert it to this is an integer 32 and it'll convert that string to an integer. It, now it needs to be an integer or you'll get an error, but for our examples, we always put a number in there. And another thing we have to change here is increment this by three. So now we've created a report for each of the sets of three fields. And now we just have to say reports, add the report to this generic collection of reports. So let's kind of see how this works by debugging it a bit. What I'll do is I'll put a breakpoint here and start it. And it gets to this point. And we see that parts is already been broken up into all of these parts, which is nice. And we're going to take these parts and make objects out of them. So let's step through this code with F10. We now have a new report here. And the report title is January report because part i is now zero and the item zero is january report and the description is now the first report and the number of pages is 123 and now we're going to add this report to the report collection and go create the next one so if i look at report collection it now has one report in it and that report looks like this so let it go through the second report and now the third report and look at reports it now has three reports in it this reports collection this is the first report, this is the second report, and this is the third report. So let me press F5 now to let it run. We didn't display anything, so it didn't show anything, so let's do that now. And we'll do that by making a simple for each loop. Report for each report in reports. Let's say we're gonna display the title. And let's run that and see how it works. And we see that the three titles appear. Immediately you sense how scalable this solution is because we just have to add another report here, for instance, April report. And it is the fourth report and has this many pages. And if we run that, we see that we have the four reports. So you can very easily make as many objects as we need, adding the objects the report objects to this generic collection which holds the objects. Now we're just displaying the title here. What you can do with classes, with these objects, is in the class make a method, for instance, called display, which 
will have its own internal logic. And watch this, what Visual Studio can do. I have the class name, or this is actually an object, but it is an object instantiated from the class report. And if I hover over that, sometimes it's hard to bring this up, but you'll eventually get this drop down. Click that and click this, generate method stub for display in this class. You click it and it automatically creates a method for you that you can implement. And it's a method that returns a string because we're displaying a string here. And so we just need to return a string. So let's just say return um, title, and that should do the exact same thing as we had before. But the power of this now is that we can do all kinds of logic in here. So we can say, for instance, return, uh, let's do string format. This enables the same kind of formatting that you do in console write. So inside here, we can say, for instance, uh, this will be the title, and then a colon, and then the description, and then a comma, and then the page marker, pages, and then the number of pages. And the variables are then title, description, and number of pages. So now when we run it, we get a nice display of each object, and each object is displaying it itself. And that's where you can begin to add logic inside of it. Uh, let me put the logic in, for instance, that if the report has more than a certain number of pages, then we will print at the end that it is a long report. And so you can see that each report controls how it is displayed, and the code which calls it just has to say, report, display yourself and gives all of the responsibility to that individual report. So let's do that. For instance, if a number of pages is greater than, let's get the number here. Let's see, what do we have, 123, 133. Let's say if it's uh, greater than 300 for this example, then display it like this. Else, and I'm doing Control C, going down here, control V. If it's over 300, then print that, but say long report. Otherwise, if it's less than 300, less than or equal to 300, it'll just print it like we had before. So if we run this, we see that the two reports that have more than 300 pages actually do report or do display long report on them. So you saw in this lesson how trying to solve a problem without creating your own class can quickly become unmanageable. You then saw how to create a custom class that addresses the problem in question, in our case, the recording of reports. By creating this class, you saw that the problem becomes much more manageable and the solution is scalable to any number of reports. What you've seen here is the beginning of object-oriented programming, which begins with creating your own custom classes.